we are now coming towards the end of the evening and the moment that we've all been waiting for, and that is to try the Shirakawa 1958. But before we get into the whiskey, I'd love to tell you the story because the whiskey itself, the fact that this whiskey exists is mm -hmm. remarkable. But the story behind it is even more remarkable. I remember getting a sample of this in 2019 and thinking, wow, a Japanese whiskey from 1958, incredible. But the more and more we found out about Shirakawa and the existence of this whiskey, the more we realized that this was truly a unicorn whiskey. This was a once in a lifetime dram. Um, Shirakawa Distillery was opened in 1939 uh, 200 kilometers to the north of Tokyo in the Fukushima prefecture. It was opened by a company called Daikoku Budoshu. Daikoku Budoshu would then go on years later to open Karazawa Distillery. Karazawa today is known as the fabled mythical Japanese whiskey. Shirakawa in many ways is a predecessor to that. In 1947, Shirakawa was purchased by Takara Shutsu. And in 1951, they started making malt whiskey. All of the malt whiskey made at Shirakawa Distillery was destined to go into blends. Uh, Takara Shutsu owned a blend called King Whiskey, and all of the malt whiskey made at Shirakawa would go into that whiskey. They only made whiskey for 18 years. They made whiskey between 1951 and 1969. And then in 1969, they stopped making whiskey. This distillery stopped making whiskey over six decades ago. The reason for that is kind of our fault. In 1970, Takara Schutzo started buying their malt whiskey from Scotland. They started buying their malt whiskey from Tamatin Distillery mm -hmm. and from other distilleries via Tamatin. And over in Japan, back at Shirakawa, they began to focus on shochu. Takara Schutzo led the shochu boom. They recognized in the West there was a boom in vodka, and in Japan, they put all of their eggs into the basket of Jun's shochu. And they started uh, hiring actors and musicians like uh, David Bowie, Sheena Easton, John Travolta into the 1990s. Madonna was in their adverts. They drove the shochu boom. And since 1984, shochu has been the number one selling spirit in Japan. So at Shirakawa, they never needed to make whiskey again. They were getting this supply from Scotland. By the 1990s, Shirakawa was only being used as a bottling facility. And in 2003, the, dis the decision was made to close and demolish the distillery. And from that point on, it faded into memory, it became a myth. And before long, any kind of understanding that Shirakawa had ever made whiskey was lost. The people that had worked at the distillery in those years were long gone. The whiskey making heritage of Shirakawa, Shirakawa was lost. And it, for many years, it was going to remain that way um, until in 2019, a discovery of this distillery's liquid history was found. Our managing director, Stephen Brender, um, had long known about Takara Schutzo's history of whiskey making. Takara, in 1986, after buying whiskey from Tamatin for over 16 years, decided to buy Tamatin Distillery and they still own the distillery to this day. Stephen was really curious about this history of whiskey making, and he began to ask questions, you know, is there any of this whiskey left? Uh, is, does anyone know anything about this distillery? And time after time after time, he was told no. It was a non-starter. There was nothing to be had. There was no conversation to be had. And then in 2018, he got a phone call um, from one of his colleagues over in Kyoto who said, I've heard a rumor that there might be some Shirakawa left. And at that moment in time, the eyes light up, the ears prick up, we start to think what's going on here. A year later, he flies out to Kyoto to have a meeting with Takara Shutsu. And there's a long, long, long agenda of business to be had. And at the bottom, it just says Japanese whiskey. And on the desk, there's a small sample that says 1958. I think they got to maybe point one or point two of the agenda before Stephen said, hold on a moment. What is that? And they said, well, we've found a parcel of whiskey from Shirakawa Distillery. What they had found is the only existing parcel of single malt from this distillery. Shirakawa has never released single malt before. There is no whiskey for it to release single malt again. This is 
the only Shirakawa bottling that will ever exist. But beyond that, when they found out that it was from 1958, they recognized that this is the earliest vintage of Japanese single malt that has ever been bottled. There has never been a single malt from Japan before 1958. So as well as being a moment of history for Shirakawa, this is a moment of history for Japanese whiskey as a whole. When we found this whiskey, we knew very, very little about Shirakawa. It was a footnote in Japanese whiskey history books. We were very lucky to work with a gentleman called Stefan van Eyken, who is very much regarded as the preeminent authority on Japanese whiskey. He wrote Whiskey Rising, which catalogues all of the Japanese whiskey distilleries. Once we found this whiskey, Stefan was able to go and find Shirakawa. He was able to go to the archives of Takara Shutsu and really research and dive deep into what we had found. And we found an incredible amount of history about the distillery, but also about how the whiskey that we have in the glass was made. We know that this whiskey was made with Japanese barley, unpeated. You will get a slight smoke to this whiskey, but it's not coming from the barley. We know that it was fermented with a proprietary wine yeast from Takara Shoot. So this was a yeast that they would have used in their winemaking. We know that the fermentation was five days long and that the distillation took place in a pair of very squat copper pot stills with a very wide distillation cut. So a very heavy bodied style of new mix spirit. And we then know that it was filled into Japanese Mizunara oak casks. And then the mystery begins. We don't know when the whiskey was taken out of casks. What we know is that the whiskey came out of casks and was moved into ceramic pots, the style of pots that shochu would be aged in before bottling, which allows oxidation and allows for flavor development. We then know that when the distillery closed in 2003, it was moved into a stainless steel vat and moved to the south of Japan. It was moved over 1,200 kilometers. That's why it was lost because it was moved over a thousand miles away from where it was first produced. And the people slowly, slowly forgot about this whiskey. We're very, very lucky that the whiskey was taken out of casks. If the whiskey had been found in casks in 2019, it would be below 40% alcohol and it would probably taste like wood. We don't know when it was taken out of casks and we don't know exactly why, but from a whiskey making point of view, we can make a theory. For me at Tomatin, when we find a cask of whiskey that we think is tremendous and really reaching its peak, we'll remove that liquid from the cask and we'll start to plan how we're going to bottle it. We want to capture it at its prime. Now imagine if you did that and then the distillery was closed and demolished and the parcel was moved from place to place to place and it was lost. And then 20 years later it was found. This is what you get. You get the earliest expression of Japanese single malt ever bottled you get the only ever Shirakawa single malt ever bottled. There will only ever be 1,500 bottles from this ghost distillery that now no longer exists. It's a true privilege to drink this every time that I get to taste it. At this point in time, I think I've drunk more of this whiskey than anyone else in the world. Um, it's, it's a really difficult job. But what is amazing, and I, I say this wholeheartedly, is every time I pick up a glass, I'm blown away by the story. This is one of those, if, if I never hear another story like this again, I'll be quite happy. It's so unbelievable that this whiskey even exists. Allowing us to discover a distillery that was forgotten about is incredible. Um, what also helps is that the liquid is really, really, really good. It's not often that you can have a 36 year old tomatin and then say the next whiskey is on par with this or even better. This is a wonderful whiskey. This is a taste of history. This is something that you may never get to experience again. So I want you to take your time with it. Nose it, taste it, enjoy it. Think of all the questions that you possibly can and then ask me them and I'll try and answer them. Um, I've said Slangeva plenty of times. I think all that's left to say is Kampai. 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 Kampai.